The new 5e Spelljammer box set came out today. Let's take a look at it. Hi everybody, my name is Justin and welcome to Game On, a show all about tabletop gaming from RPGs to board games and everything in between. Today we're going to take a look at the new box set for 5th edition Spelljammer. We're going to do my first thoughts, my first impressions. I have not playtested this, so I don't have a whole lot of extra information to give you other than my first straight from the hip thoughts on the box set and the rules that were provided. But before we get into that, I want to give you a very quick housekeeping note. I am moving, hence why you probably see some of these boxes behind me. So please bear with me as I quickly and efficiently move into another house. And I'm also building a purpose-built YouTube studio. So we have a whole bunch of videos recorded and we will be releasing those as we move because I'll have not as much time to do it. But enough about that, let's get right into the box set. So I got the alternative cover slip case for these books. I was happy to be the very first one in my favorite local game store to run in and grab it. Their phones were going off the hook because people were trying to reserve these books because everybody seemed to want these. The uh, manager happened to tell me how glad he was to get like 70 of the alternative and like 100 of the other ones because he pretty much sure by the phone calls that they were going to be sold out that day. So I'm happy I was able to grab them. So let's take a look at this slipcase and what is in it. So uh, first we have the DM screen. The DM screen has everything that a DM is going to need to run that game in Wild Space and the Astral Sea. It's got some special rules for movement as well as different hit locations and different things that you might need for space combat with ships and not ships so if you want to do melee or ranged as a PC. Also, the artwork on this DM screen is beautiful. We have ourselves a dead god reaching out to the void of the Astral Sea as some lunar dragons pass by in the background. Really, really pretty in my opinion. So the very first book that we're going to pull out is Boo's Astral Menagerie. Boo's Astral Menagerie is the monster manual for this uh, slipcase and this box set. Uh, my Boo's Men Astral Menagerie, unfortunately, had a cover uh, crack on it. There was a crack on it. And it's kind of sad. I mean, it's, it's not going to hurt the book in general, but... You know, it's not perfect like the other ones are, so that's kind of sad. And then flipping, flipping over onto the back, we have uh, the cosmic horror kind of thing going on. Uh, it, it's I like it. It kind of reminds me of Cthulhu. So uh, we'll get into what's in Booze Menagerie in just a second. The second book that we're going to pull out is the Astral Adventurer's Guide that has the GIF on it. And in the back of this book, the back cover, you will see two flintlock pistols crossing, at least on the alternative cover. And in here, we're going to have DM and player things that you would need to run and play the game. So this is where we're going to have different backgrounds and different PC races, and I'll get into that in just a little bit. And the back of this book has a really nice big poster with beautiful artwork of the Rock of Brawl. The Rock of Brawl is a iconic location in spell jamming. Anyone who's played spell jammer can probably tell you that they've heard of the Rock of Brawl, just of how central of a location it is. That's where a lot of GIF live. So we have both the top and the bottom of the Rock of Brawl, which is very important for the final book, which is The Light of Xarxes, which has the Xarxian Empire's logo in the back. I hope I'm saying that right. But in this book, this is the 64-page adventure for characters level 5 through 8, which I am excited to talk a little bit more about. So let's dig into these books just a little bit and see what we get for our 80 bucks we pay with roughly with tax. So taking a look at Boo's Astral Menagerie first, we can see that there are some pretty cool monsters in here that we can throw at our players, both in Wild Space, in the Astral Sea, as well as in regular games. Now, what I'm liking about this is that it's actually kind of giving us higher CR monsters. A lot of the monster manuals that we are getting in 5th edition tend to lean towards the, the low CR to middle CR, but we're getting some higher CRs in the high teens 
even in the 20s in this book, which is really nice to see because we don't get a lot of support for high CR creatures. This book is written similarly to just about every kind of monster manual that we have gotten so far in 5th edition. What I really like is that in the front of the book, it does have the CR ratings for all of them. So you can quickly look through the book, uh, the front of the book, and say, I need something that's like a CR, you know, 5, and flip to that. Uh, it's not written any really differently than any other of the monster manuals that we've gotten so far for 5th edition. It gives you your stat block, it gives you a little bit of fluff piece, and then it expands on some of the races and some of the creatures that we already have, like Thrycreen, as well as Gith, uh, Githyanki. So it gives us a couple of different enemies that we can use as uh, DMs against our players, just kind of helps pad out what we might be using when we want to have a challenge for our players. Next, we're gonna take a look at our Astral Adventurer's Guide. This is the guide that is gonna be both for players and the DM. This is gonna have new backgrounds for some of our players, as well as new PC races. I kind of like the Hadozi. I like the fact that they have something called Nimble Feet, whereas a bonus action they can kind of uh, use their feet to do simple actions, kind of like a cunning action for a rogue. So playing a Hadozi rogue with uh, the special action that they can do stuff with their feet seems pretty neat to me, as well as they can glide. So for every like foot that they move, they can glide another five feet. Uh, somebody on Reddit said that that was broken, and they did a whole bunch of math showing that a Hodozi can move like 500 feet in a turn, but uh, most people on Reddit roasted him, saying that most DMs would never let that happen. So, <laughs> what I really like this adventurer's guide is that it gives you a seed. If you are a brand new DM, or even not a brand new DM, but you just need an idea on how to run the game, uh, and how to come up with a cool adventure. You can just roll right on that D10 and you will get a really cool seed to start a awesome adventure. So that is incredibly helpful. I really like the backgrounds. They look pretty neat, some of the things that they can give you. I also, like I said, I like the player races. They seem pretty cool. They look very similar to what I was suggesting in one of my old videos and we will you know, you can go take a look at that. I was using the Unearthed Arcana uh, to kind of guess what we were going to see. But it seems like most of the things transferred over, uh, including the Gift's Magical Spark to be able to do crazy things with their guns. Not only that, but my predictions for how Spelljammer Space Combat in that last video that I made actually seem to come to fruition. We get 16 spell jammers in this book. Maybe we'll get an expanded spell jammer book later down the line, but it seems that we have a spell jammer with a hole and then uh, different points that you can damage with damage thresholds uh, down kind of at the bottom of the stat block, it'll tell you. So that's exactly what I thought was gonna happen from Ghost of Saltmarsh. Uh, as for the rules for combat, I was trying to kind of read through them. I still maybe think I'm going to use my idea that I use from Traveler, where I just care about how far away they are. I don't care so much about facing, but I will have to do an in-depth review on that later on as I feel more comfortable with it. However, 16 ships, uh, most of them iconic, are really cool. I like the Damselfly. I love the Nautiloid, so I'm super duper excited to have my players flying through the Astral Sea in really, really cool ships. Finally, for DMs in this slipcase, we get the Light of Xarxes, which is a three-part, 64-page, for levels 5 to 8, adventure that kind of takes you all over Astral Space and even Doom Space. And I have opened it up, and I have read some of it, and I want to tell you that I'm actually quite happy with the way that they've laid this out. It doesn't look like DMs are going to have to do chapter hopping. One of my biggest gripes I have with 5th uh, edition uh, DM, uh, you know, 5th edition adventure modules, really, is that the DM has to flip back and forth, back and forth, and, like, chapters aren't laid out in the way that you would think they would be, like, even Curse of Strahd is like that, where like the next 
thing. Like you start chapter one, and then the next thing is actually like chapter six. So Light of Xarxes does things in an order that seems to be quite easy for DMs to get a grasp of. I like how they lay out what is gonna happen in this part, what you need to do in this specific chapter, and special little tool tips and sidebars. I actually really enjoy that. I hope all of 5th edition modules are laid out like this so that you don't have to jump from level si or from chapter 6 to chapter 12 if you're moving from level 3 to level 4. <laughs> That's one of my biggest gripes. I really like the ending. I did read the ending um, a little bit and I really like how open-ended it is and how it's able to propel you as a DM into making the rest of the campaign your campaign and how uh, it affects the rest of the Wild Space and the Astral Sea. And it seems like the uh, writers really took into account for players that want to continue and DMs who want to continue in this uh, story arc, uh, how they can homebrew it themselves. I think more D&D modules need that in their books. So I live in Connecticut where the tax rate is pretty high. So with tax, I played $79.75 for these three books, this big poster, and this really nice DM screen. Do I think it's worth it? I think it is. Uh, if you can get it on sale, obviously get it on sale. I saw that there were some pre-orders for some places online one that specifically sounds like a certain rainforest that's selling it for half that price but it's not the alternative cover also doesn't look like it would be shipped until september so i was willing to pay the higher play price and support my favorite local game store by buying it day one with the alternative cover do i think it's worth it yes uh, I am super excited that I have this. It's going to look great on my new game shelf as soon as I move and get to my new uh, game area and everything. Uh, stay tuned for more in-depth versions of these uh, book reviews. I won't be able to get those out until a couple of weeks, but I wanted to just do a quick overview and why I like this so far and my thoughts. What do you guys think about this? Do you think it's worth what I paid for it? What would you pay for it? Are you excited for this? Are you going to get it yourself? My name is Justin. I thank you from the bottom of my heart for watching. And as always, game on.